don't forget that this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials which you can access on our YouTube playlist or alternatively if you would like to you can purchase the whole course on Udemy there should be a link to the YouTube playlist and a link to our Udemy course which should always provide the best price in the video description. One of the overarching aims of building and maintaining a database is to uphold data integrity. A data integrity refers to accuracy, the consistency and reliability of data stored within a database. Many of the initial exercises that we are completing in this section of the course is actually working you through a set of considerations to think about when developing a database or designing a database. So here in this tutorial, we're going to discuss null and blank field options, which relates to the idea of whether data should or should not be inserted into a field when we insert a new record into the database. So it isn't always necessarily the case that when we add a new record into, for example, the product table here, that we're going to enter data into every single field. Some fields, when we add a new record to the product table, will be mandatory. So for example, primary keys, foreign keys, generally that would get populated. Now, if we take a look at some of the fields here, you would imagine also that the PID, the product ID and the name, those would probably be mandatory fields. We, ex we would expect there to be data in these fields when we add a new record to the product table. Some of these fields, that might not be the case. So for example, description. So it might be the case that we don't include a description straight away. That isn't necessarily important. That might be related to administration of the product, for example, rather than a description that a, a customer would, would view on the website. The question of what should be included in a record will be dependent potentially on your idea of what a product is and how it will interact, how that data will be used and interact with your application. So that is something that, again, may come down to the requirements of your project. Now, this isn't probably the best example of where we might have a non-required field. Take, for example, a user table. In a user table, we may have three options for phone numbers, their home number, their work number, and their mobile phone. And it's not always the case that users would provide all of those numbers. So we would naturally have some blank fields when we insert data for maybe a user table. Let's start off and say that each field type in Django may have a different default value for null and blank. So you will need to sometimes consult the documentation to determine, to determine the default value for null and blank for a particular field. Let's take a look at character field, a popular field type used in our database. So the default options behind the scenes, the default options for the character field is set to null, false, blank, false. The null is referring to the database level. This is an option that determines whether a database column should allow null values. So whether we should allow inserting a new record into the product table and not including a value for the PID, in this case, field. So in this case, null is set to false. So because of that, that means that it is not optional. We have to mandatory include a value for this field when we insert a new record in this table in the database. So for a character field, that is the default value. So we always have to, by default, add a, add a, a value into a field, which is defined with the character field type. If I were to change this to true, that obviously now means that null value is allowed for this field in the database. Therefore, when we add a new record in this table, it means that we can leave this blank and it will then get validated and saved to the database as a null value. When I say null, I mean no value. So the second option blank, this option will control whether a field is allowed to be empty in forms. Now here in Django, we can generate forms from a model. Now let's imagine we generated a form from a model. We allowed the user to enter a new product in that form. 
Now, this option here defines the fact that we have to. It is a required field in that form. So if the user doesn't type anything into that field, then it will be validated false, and then the user will be prompted to enter data in this field. If we want to make it optional, because let's face it, we've now changed null to true, so this field does allow null values, we might want to change that to true. So whenever this field is used in a form, it means that the user won't have to, mandatory have to insert data into that field when saving new records into the product table. And don't worry for now, if you're not familiar with forms, Django admin site, I will loop back on that as and when we get to that component in this section of the course. So now our job is to move through each field and try to determine whether it is or should be a null field or not, whether it should be an optional field or not. Now, I don't think that should be an optional field because it's a product ID, so I'm making it going to make it mandatory. Now, again, this is very subjectional based upon your system requirements, whether you choose that or not, but I don't imagine there's too many fields here which we can set to, to null equals true. But saying that, um, actually, the description we might want to set to true. So this isn't going to be a mandatory field. Field types, for example, Boolean fields is going to be true or false. So there isn't any kind of middle ground there. It's going to be set to true or false. We might want to set a, a default value, something we didn't discuss. So default might be true, for example. So with the Boolean value, value, we might want to set that to true or false as a default value. I won't do that for now, but that is maybe a consideration. Actually, I will do that now. Let's uh, set the default to, to false because most of my products won't be digital. So I'm going to set it to uh, false to begin with. Now, it will be a mandatory field because I'm going to need to set that true or false. So I don't necessarily have to set default, but that can save me a little bit of time because most of my products will be, uh, won't be digital. Now, this is something that can be very specific to your particular project needs. I will just work through some other fields to give you a flavor of some of the considerations you might need to think about when developing your field. So is active. So I'm just simply going to ask myself, does that need to be a null? Um, does that need to be default, true or false? Well, is active. So if I develop a new product, I probably don't want to make it live straight away, maybe because it's not in stock just yet, or it's not quite ready to go active. So maybe I set the default to false there just to protect that. The stock status, well, that's probably going to be mandatory and it's going to be one of these selections. It's either going to be um, in stock, out of stock or on order. So I think that pretty much solves everything there. The date time field will automatically be generated, don't forget. So there's no option there to consider. Now, the only option I didn't mention actually was slug. But if I'm going to make a name, then I probably ought to also make a slug as well. And that might not be clear and understandable at that point if you're not familiar with slug fields. But by default, slug field is mandatory. So I'm just going to keep it as is. Now, if you would prefer, of course, you can just add in null equals false. So if you need some visual, some sort of visual guidance to remember, you can just define what already is the default setting. I won't include that in my design because I'm already fully aware of the default, but that is definitely a school of thought that some will follow for a number of different reasons. Right, so let's keep uh, moving down to the next field. So the product line, so the price, well, it's going to need a price, right? So the decimal field, um, it will be a case of quickly looking at the Django documentation to see if it's mandatory. Now, if you go back to the Django documentation, have a look at the documentation in the same page we were looking at the field types, you will find field options. And it actually describes it that the null field option and the blank field option is available to all field types. Now, I'm not trying to contradict myself. Earlier, I said there are some field types that potentially are not utilizing this. And this will be the case in some advanced scenarios. But let's just consider and think of these values now as available for all field types. And we can see here that null is actually default to false. That's the default for all field types. 
and blank is the same scenario. So the default is false. So going back to the product line here, we can make the assumption this is a mandatory field because uh, it is null is set to false as a default. So I'm happy that this should be a mandatory field. Uh, so we've got the SKU, which uh, potentially is also a mandatory field. Uh, stock quantity, that seems like a, a good field to be mandatory. We might want to set that, in actual fact, the default to zero. That seems like a good idea because we might not have any stock. So we're going to need to enter some value at least. So at least we have a value entered and that's going to be zero by default. So is active, that's a true and false. So is active. So let's set the default there to false. There we go. And that needs to be a capital. Okay. And then order. So this is the order. Now that's something I will explain uh, as and when we get to queries, but that's the order of the product line. And I will highlight, like I said, the importance of that, the potential importance of that. So we don't need to enter anything there necessarily. And then we have the weight. So that will also be mandatory. Now, what we're doing here, going over the specifics of each field is something or a process that you ought to take when actually developing your tables and fields. So it's all good practice. So in the product image here, the name that is going to be mandatory alternative text. Well, that is going to be mandatory. I want to make sure that's mandatory. The image, there ought to be an image because this is all about an image, right? So that needs to be mandatory. And then the order again, I'll explain at a later point. Okay, so the category name slug, that's all going to be mandatory in my system is active. Uh, we're going to set that. Uh, let's set the default uh, to to false. For the same scenario as the product, it might be that we're just developing the category in preparation for a later point. So we want to just make sure by default it's set to false. And then when we're ready, we can change it so it then becomes active. And then seasonal events where we've got two fields that will automatically populate or won't. These won't be automatically populated, but they will be mandatory. Uh, so we need to uh, add them ourselves when we add a new seasonal event and the name will need to be mandatory. So we leave the default to null equals false. 